More and more of our country's information ecosystem has been transformed into a machine that takes what Donald Trump says and pushes it out as the truth. And that means that Donald Trump can get away with blatant lies like this one. Make up some lies, like she said about the border bill that Trump stopped. Let me tell you, number one, I didn't stop it. That was Donald Trump today in Michigan telling a rally that he did not stop the bipartisan immigration bill that was drafted earlier this year. Now, that may sound like a small detail, but because polls show immigration is a top issue for voters this year, and because Trump is trying to pin the current status of our country's immigration system on Vice President Harris, whether or not Trump killed something that would have addressed immigration in a big way is a key detail here. And the truth is, He did. He did kill it. But don't just take my word for it. Everybody who comes on this floor and says our border is broken, we should do something about it. You're absolutely right. Um, And unfortunately, we didn't get there. President Trump opposed the Senate bill. We couldn't find a better way forward. President Trump said don't fix anything uh, during the presidential election. It's the single biggest issue during the election. Don't resolve this. Just a couple of months ago, Republican senators were loud and proud about the fact that it was Donald Trump who killed that bipartisan immigration bill. And you know who else was loud and proud about it? Donald Trump. There is zero chance I will support this horrible open borders betrayal of America. It's not going to happen. I noticed that, and I'll fight it all the way, I noticed a lot of the senators A lot of the senators are trying to say respectfully they're blaming it on me. I said, that's okay. Please blame it on me. Please. Blame it on me, please. But of course, now that that particular detail is complicating Trump's presidential campaign, he is rewriting history in front of our eyes. And to a huge swath of the country, he will probably get away with it. Meanwhile, back on Earth One, in reality, today Vice President Harris made a trip to Douglas, Arizona, to the U.S.-Mexico border, where she did her best to tell the truth about Donald Trump. It was the strongest border security bill we have seen in decades. It was endorsed by the Border Patrol Union. And it should be in effect today, producing results in real time right now for our country. But Donald Trump tanked it. He picked up the phone and called some friends in Congress and said, stop the bill. Because you see, he prefers to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. Which version of this story will more of the American public believe? Harris's version or Trump's? It's hard to know. Right now, the polls aren't just unbelievably close. They are also confusingly contradictory. Just as an example, let's look at the state Vice President Harris is in right now, Arizona. New polling from Bloomberg Today shows Harris up in Arizona by three points. But new polling from USA Today shows Trump up in Arizona by six points. So where are we really? Joining me now are two people who know a thing or two about running presidential campaigns. Faz Shakir, former campaign manager for Senator Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign, and Roger Lau, former campaign manager for Senator Elizabeth Warren's 2020 presidential one, and currently deputy executive director of the DNC. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for spending a little of your Friday evening with me. I just, Faz, let me just start with you. In terms of the polling, which would get anybody seasick, right? (laughs) It's just back and forth, the dial moving this way and that. I mean, how do you look at, for example, Arizona? When you think about Arizona, what do you think? Well, so you look at that border trip today, and it wouldn't obviously be my first choice as a progressive, but the campaign would rightly respond that, well, we're not thinking about you, Faz. You're going to vote for Kamala Harris anyways. So we need to think about the people who aren't going to vote for, who are undecided, who are on the fence. And I'm sure that they've got um, indications that the immigration issue is one that they need to continue to resolve with some of those people. We're getting into the phase, Alex, where 
uh, data science is going to play a huge role for each of these campaigns and particularly for Harris's because you're going to have early votes coming in and good campaigns will track those early votes, know whether their people are voting and they're going to know more importantly who's not voting and then those people letting them know what are the messages that are going to move you, how do we need to persuade you down the home stretch? It's going to play a giant role, data will, in these next few weeks. Huh? Where she announced her plans for immigration and the border. It was actually a wide ranging, incredibly substantive speech on the policy end. Still with me, Maria Inaosa and Fernand Amandi. Maria, what'd you think? So it took about 20 minutes for her to switch the conversation from fentanyl, immigrants, crime, drugs, et cetera. And it's transnational gangs, border, security. Gangs, which is basically saying, oh my God, at the border, that's all you're seeing gangs, drug trafficking. That's not all you're seeing. OK, but correct. She did make the switch. And you and I were just like, oh, my gosh, hmm. did she just talk about dreamers? Did she just say that she's going to really attempt to create a pathway to citizenship? That phrase struck out to me because that phrase and you've been covering immigration longer than I have, but I've been covering it for a minute as well. Yeah. That phrase was the center of so many debates and policy debates and legislation and McCain Kennedy and all these things has been annihilated from the national mm -hmm. public discourse. And it was like, you and I both went, oh, oh I haven't heard that in a while. Wow, she right, said yeah. that. So in that sense, she, I would have gone just a step further to say again, and I am the daughter of immigrants. I am the immigrant. I am, I am you, you are me. Believe in me. Because the rhetoric, as she said, what did she say? Not rhetoric, but solutions. Results, yeah. Right, not rhetoric, but results. What she needs to say is that the conversation about painting all immigrants as criminals is factually wrong. Yeah. We know this. Also, crime has dropped. Fentanyl ODs have dropped. Yeah. Why is she not saying it's time to turn the page on that rhetoric? She herself needs to turn the page on that rhetoric. Having said that, yeah. I'm going to give her a few points. And you know I'm highly critical. You are. I'm highly critical because our country should be doing better, Chris. This was, Fernand, the, the theory, I mean, I understand the, the political theory of the case, and I think they executed on that theory in this speech. And the basic idea here is there's a person who's a kind of braying maniac and a demagogue who doesn't actually, isn't interested in results, and I can take the energy, that sort of dark demagogic energy that's there, that, this disgusting, you know, blood libel being thrown at, at, at migrants, and I could take out people's real concerns and address them in a sort of practical, plain spoken way and cut through. That was the that was the goal here. How effective do you think it was? Chris, that speech is why Kamala Harris is going to win this election on November 5th. <laughs> Somewhere in America at this moment, there are focus groups taking place that the campaign has put together and they're dial testing. They're seeing, all right, what is the reaction to that? That thing was off the charts extraordinary. Between the Clintonian turn of phrase of making uh, uh, this immigration issue a false choice, we're not gonna allow that, we're gonna make it safe, orderly, and humane, kind of a play on Clinton's famous safe, legal, and rare hmm. uh, way he handled the abortion issue, which was thorny in the 90s, she gave a serious speech that didn't sound like an open borders advocacy. She said, I'm a responsible leader. I'm going to solve this problem. I am not going to allow demagogues to do that. I'm going to be humane about how we treat this. And I'm going to respect the work that immigrants have contributed to this country, whether they be those that have been here for decades, dreamers, or those that want to come and seek the American dream lawfully and legally through the process of political asylum. I was stunned at how how extraordinary it was and what we're seeing is also a candidate who is growing by leaps and bounds on the national stage just a fantastic speech by Kamala Harris um, Maria, what, what, just last word to you because I do I think it was a very effective speech the thing that I worry about and I think you probably share this worry is that and it, it, everything she said is true there are transnational gangs those gangs are bringing fentanyl in there are all the stuff she said about the precursor chemicals going from uh, China to Mexico are true fentanyl is a scourge it is I mean there's 100,000 overdoses a year in this country. In 1982, it was like 1,000, okay? All that's true. To the extent you light up the parts of people's amygdala and their brainstem, where they associate the border immigrants and, f and bad stuff, right? drugs, cartels, crime, you are lighting up the part of them that is going to make them more likely to vote for Donald Trump. Correct. That is my fear. Correct. <laughs> Which is why, if I was Kamala Harris and you're looking at numbers, 
you're looking at young Latino and Latina voters. And they want to hear what she ultimately turned to, which right. is a pathway. Well, some of them want to hear the first thing, too, though. Let's they be do. clear. They, they do. They do. I was just it, in Miami. And uh, a lot of people in Miami want to hear that first part. I just was in Miami, too. <laughs> and that is and it is a very scary situation where you have Latinos saying things like, they need to build that wall. <laughs> they need to build the wall and make it bigger. And you're just like, are you serious? Yeah. But young Latinos and Latinas yeah. can be that part of the electorate that moves it to, t- towards her. And she needs to do that consciously, absolutely consciously. That the, the, the sort of pragmatism here, which I think, again, I think, you know, this sort of this, this that sort of sweet spot we talked about, right? Like orderly, safe and humane. And I agree with you, Fernand. I, I like that safe, orderly, humane um, as a as a kind of slogan for. So, folks, that's a nightmare for Trump. Harris, frankly, just walked in to Donnie's kitchen, went into the cupboards and ate all of his cookies ate his lunch, ate his dinner, on his issue, demonstrated that she's better at it. And look, I'm going to be honest. I do not like the rhetoric coming from the Democrats on this issue. But I recognize, unfortunate as it is, that the United States is moving in a sharp rightward direction on immigration. Harris is a politician. I'm not. And it seems like she's struck a chord here. She's taking a a more hard-nosed, frankly, uh, center-right position on the immigration question, which is one of the reasons why she and Joe were able to get a bipartisan deal almost done. As noted there, Trump killed it for political purposes, but right-wing senators were on board. This was not... Something that was done between, you know, the Murkowski and Collins only. You know, they had a couple of the the more moderate GOP senators. They know we're talking about like real deal right of center Republican senators supporting this deal and members in the House as well supporting this deal saying we will not get a better immigration deal than this from a Republican perspective. But. This is what the people want. They want more action. It shows that Harris can be, quote unquote, pragmatic in a way Trump can't. Because here's the thing, and this is a a criticism I have the Democrats, but sometimes it works politically, I suppose, is, you know, they'll be willing to work with conservatives to pass conservative policy. Republicans will never do that, right? That's the thing. And it showcases that Donald Trump can't adapt that Harris can go in on his issues and give a nuanced speech that does reach to the center right but unlike Trump and Vance does not offer a blanket dehumanization like the cats and dogs story I don't know where this is going to end up again this is not my my favorite part of Harris's policy platform it is it but she's trying to become president and in so doing her kicking Donnie's ass on his property, the immigration question, his number one since build the wall in 2015 issue, that's pretty impressive.